Hey guys, my name is Frank and this is the Pothon Programming Video Log and today I'm going to be showing you how to calculate a player character's position in a tile-based world and actually have him interact with the tiles in that tile world. So it's kind of like a really, really simple form of tile-based collision detection that's going on here. Because what is happening is I'm calculating the position in the map that the player character is over with this formula here and I'm setting that tile to equal zero. So I'm gonna come into the code here before I, I give this a better explanation here, and I'm gonna go down to my game object. I'm not gonna cover the controller or the display because I've covered it already, how to do that stuff in other tutorials, but I'm gonna come down to the game object here and just give an explanation of what's going on and how I am changing these blue tiles to gray tiles with collision detection, tile-based collision detection, so here is my one dimensional map and here are some variables that hold information about the map. The map is 16 columns wide and nine rows high. Important to keep track of those. And the tiles are each 20 by 20 pixels. So that's important as well. And this is my one dimensional map. So as you can see, if I refresh the screen over here, ones in my map represent blue tiles and zeros represent gray tiles. And also in my game loop, I'm randomly adding more and more blue tiles to the map because that's part of the game. You have to eliminate all the blue tiles in order to get a little prompt that says, hey, you beat the game. It's not really a game, but I figured I'd spice up the example a little bit for you guys so you have something cool to do if you decide to, you know, eliminate all those blue tiles. But basically, how this works is I get the X and Y tile position of my character with some code inside of my game loop. So I'm going to go down to that and give you guys a look at how I'm calculating the position of my player in the tile grid. So these two lines right here are how I calculate the X and Y tile values of my player object. So it's really, really simple. I know I've covered this in another tutorial, but I'm going to go over it again because I'm going to get into tile based collision detection methods in my tutorials. So I want to just give a little refresher here. So basically it's really simple. That tile size value that I just showed you of 20 up in the map object or the world object that holds information about the map, tile size is 20 pixels. So if I bring my player character up here to the very top left of my screen and I move him about 20 pixels to the right, that's about 20 pixels to the right. Replace that value here for the player x value 20, and then I'm going to divide that by 20, and it's going to give me 1. If I move him over to 40, roughly, 40 divided by 20 is 2. If I move him over to roughly 60, it's going to be 3. So as you can see, it's just simple division. I use math.floor to round that value down to a whole number. And then I can use these x and y tile positions, blah, tile positions, to get a index inside of my one dimensional map array. So how I do that is with this formula right here. And this is actually gonna set the specified tile at the specified index in my one dimensional map array to zero. So any tile that my player character moves over is going to be set to zero inside the map. But this formula is basically this formula right here. So what's happening is I'm taking the Y position, the Y tile position of my character, which is two. So we see two right here. I'm multiplying it by the number of columns in my map, which is 16. And then I'm adding the X position of my player character to that to get 37. So I know that right here, my character is over position 37 in my map. So if I go back up to my map, going to take a while. Just going to scroll here, scrolling for a little bit. My player character is over position 37 in my map, which is roughly here somewhere. And if you look at the map and you look at the game world, you can tell, obviously, 37 is someplace right here. If I go to position 00, zero my map index is going to equal 0. So that would be this position right here, and clearly it's the same position. If I come all the way down here, which is index 143 in my map, because my map index starts at zero, and I do the same in my player character, it should be 143. 
So as you can see, this formula does a great job of accurately converting the X and Y tile positions of my player character in a tile world to the map index inside of the one dimensional map array. And this is really useful for seeing what tile you're standing over and doing collision detection. So now I'm going to jump back down into my game loop and go over some more of the code that's in there. If I can actually find the place where I left off, which is right here. So what this line does is it basically just sets any tile that my character is standing on to zero. And that's going to set that tile to gray. So when I run over these tiles, every tile I touch is just going to be set to gray. And it is. Then, to make this example a little more fun, what I'm going to do is I'm going to loop through my map, and this is a very inefficient way to do this. What I should be doing is counting every time a blue tile is added. This way I don't have to loop over my entire map. I can just check to see how many blue tiles are on the screen. But this is an example. It's not you know, meant to be a real functioning game because obviously no one would play this. So I'm just going to do the inefficient way because it's easy. And that's how I did it to start. So all you do is you loop over your entire map and you check every tile position in the map or every index in the map to see if any tiles left are a 1. And a 1 represents a blue tile. So if any of these tiles that are left is a 1, you can't win. So I'm going to set the victory value to false. If none of them are 1, meaning that all the tiles are gray and I've eliminated all the blue tiles, then victory is going to say, stay true. And when victory is true, basically all you're going to do is just set up a little alert prompt that says, hey, you win. And that's it. The other thing is adding the tiles to the map, adding blue tiles to the map. So as you can see, every now and then a blue tile just pops up in my map here, like there and there and there. So what's happening here is that at the beginning of my game loop, I think at the beginning, if I recall correctly, if I can find the top of my game loop anyway, actually, I guess it's not at the top of my game loop, but basically what I do is I set a, a counter equal to a random value. I think it's down here, actually. Yeah. So I set up my counter. And every time the game loops on every frame of animation, I subtract one from my counter. And every time the counter is less than zero, I add a, a new blue tile to the map at a random location on the screen. So basically how I do this is I just say the map at a random location is now equal to 1. And I reset the counter up to be a random number between 0 and 125, which will make the game wait between 0 and 125 frames before it puts the next blue tile on the screen. And that's it. That's a really simple game, and I did it only in 265 lines with lots of comments and lots of white space. Over here is my HTML, and as you can see, it's really, really simple. There's absolutely nothing to it. I just, you know, I set up my H1 and my P tag there and my canvas and include my script tag, and that's it. So hopefully you guys have a better understanding of how to do tile-based collision detection now. And I know this isn't, you know, bouncing off of walls and it's not slope tiles and it's nothing cool yet, but I'm going to get to that stuff before you learn how to do that stuff First, you have to learn this, and what this is is basically just determining where your player is standing in the map and changing values of tiles underneath where he's standing. Doing something with that tile value, checking it to see what the value is, because say I have a bunch of different tiles on here, and some are square block tiles, and some are slope tiles, and some are half tiles. I'm going to need to know what those are and how to deal with them. So that's what all this is about. It's just finding out what tile I'm standing over and doing something, detecting where I am on the screen. So hopefully you guys learned something. Hopefully you stick around for the next video because it's definitely going to be cooler. More of this stuff only with actual tile-based collision, 2D tile-based collision. And so yeah, stick around. And I'll see you guys next time. Blue squares are invading. Quickly use the keyboard to wield the mighty yellow circle and defeat them. So I gotta go around here and take out all these blue squares until none are left, and that will defeat the evil blue squares. 
I'm not sure if I can do it right here. I think I got it. Oh, man. It's tricky. It's my own, it's my own controls. They're fighting against me. Bam. You have done it. You have vanquished the evil blue squares, but they will rise again. All right. Yeah, that's it.